Hi, I'm Jen Campbell. This is Art About. I'm sitting here with Judy George, and a uh, graphite artist and um, local pillar of the community. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, first thing that I want to discuss is this lovely uh, start to a drawing. Mm -hmm. um, this is this is your dog Peanut. It is, yes. Yeah. And you've um, enshrined him in your art. So yeah. can you walk us through kind of the first phase of... Yeah, so there's actually a phase a tiny bit before this, which would be actually just um, sketching. That's I don't really sketch, but just putting everything where it should be. So um, this is just a little bit past that where I started in some shading. But basically how I would start out is I use um, what's called a grid method. Okay. So I work in boxes, essentially, on my reference photo and then on my paper. And I do that because I'm a, um, I'm a realist. My art's all realism and I very much um, hyper-realism. And I concentrate on shapes, not objects. So you get thrown off. If you're trying to draw an eye or something, a lot of times you get thrown off. So I draw shapes. So if I break it into small chunks... And then I start this process now, which is I'm putting in putting in the details. And I always start with the background um, for a couple reasons. Number one, if you do the foreground first and it looks beautiful, and then you put the background in and you make a mistake and you have to erase, it doesn't work well. Um, and number two, especially with this type of um, project right here, where it's a dark background, I've set the tone for my darks. So I know right now where my darks go. And that just means when you're looking and you're putting in your layers, yep. certain areas, like this is the darkest dark, and it's going to be the same as this dark. And so I just kind of pull um, knowing where it's got to be. And then if that's that dark, then certain other areas have to be so light. And it's just a prog uh, process of back and forth. You kind of... So you're trying to uh, get a sense of the, the contrast? Exactly, because that's all this is. All this is is... Um, oh, yeah. All this is is lines on a piece of paper, and yeah. I make you, I trick you into thinking it's a dog. Yeah. Um, that's my job, and the only way you do that is by the contrast and also by the texture. So, this you can start seeing a little bit in, in this stage of it, but there's more to it where you can see that I'm kind of using the pencil in such a way to make the. Uh, I'm not going up and down. So if I went up and down, it would it would look like a wall. Yeah. Um, so I actually use my pencil in the, the way to show the way the hair is growing, um, where it would grow. And then I'm also, while I'm doing that, I'm putting in the um, shading in those parts so that this is a base. And, you know, nothing about most art in this, uh, whether it's a uh, um, painting yep. or is linear. So you don't usually go, okay, I'm going to start here and just go. It's kind of a like this looks like I just went into a corner and went up and down. But you're back and forth. You're adjusting the whole time. So when you're saying back and forth, what do you mean specifically in the region of the paper? So in between this photo and the last photo, it looks like I just made a night because I only took, I don't take photos constantly. So I might do it every hour or whatever. Yeah. And um, when I'm working in any area, I'll put something down. I'll put like a just the ground, which would be um, maybe the the base color, yep. and then I'll start filling in shadows. And then when I look at I'll step back and go, oh, this one needs to be a little bit darker to match that. So as you're going, you're, you're comparing each element back and forth, and that yep. continues through the whole process. Yep. Um, right to the end, you can do a lot of correcting and erasing right down to the end, and, and I usually do. Yeah. But, oh, this is, so this yeah. is very textured. Yep, so now you're getting more of the texture. Um, a hugely important part of my work is the erasing. It's almost as important as the actual using of the graphite, and that's putting in um, the lightest lights, but also some of the, like the fur texture that you're seeing yep. was made by erasers. So I have several different erasers that I use. I use a kneaded eraser. Um, I use what's called a pencil. It looks like a pencil, and that'll give me a finer line. Okay. I have an electric race eraser that'll really get um, pick up a lot of the graphite. The kneaded one will, will kind of, 
it just picks up some of it. It's almost like silly putty. That's what I yeah. was thinking. Yeah. So yeah. I have a, a few different ones, and then depending on what I'm, what area I'm working on, I'll use use that. And then I have other things too. I have these little stubs of um, paper yep. that I use to blend with, but I also use those to lay color. Those are great. So after you've blended with them, they still have the graphite on them, and now you can use that graphite in another area. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah. Do you use brushes too? Or? I very rarely do. The only time I use a brush is um, if I'm cleaning it up, if I've done a lot of erasing and I don't want to blow on it or yep. put my hand on it, I'll okay. use a brush. Okay. That's, uh, that's good to know. And so is this piece almost the final piece? Um, I don't, I think there might be, it might be the final that I took the picture of, but there would be a lot more going on in this whole back area, but it might be the last one I took a picture of, I'm not sure. Okay. Um, okay. But yeah, like I said, I, I, I don't do it for, usually I take pictures when I'm done for the day. Okay, right. I'll take this picture, so. And, and the idea behind the photographs are to, to see your progress? Or? I like him to see my progress, and I also like him to see my errors. Yeah. So um, the brain tricks you a whole lot, and sometimes you can't see things. Um, so a lot of artists find that if you look at a photograph of your work, you see things differently, and you can pick up errors easily. Another trick that we use a lot of times is, is looking at things upside down. So you look at your reference and you look at the actual ah. and, you know, the negative space. There's a whole lot of different things. But I find if I look on my phone, put it away, and then the next day, don't even look at the actual piece, look at my phone, then if there's something, it comes right out at me. If there's something that's not right. Something not right. Not right, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then the process of not right, you have to remove with the erase the erasers. E yeah, either remove it or sometimes it's not even removing, it's adjusting things around it because that's another um, thing that's really common and I find that, like I do teaching, and I find that with my students all the time. They'll think there's something wrong and we they know it and they'll think it's that corner of the eye. Yeah. And it really isn't. It's really the tip of the ear, I'm just say, saying that. But because that is wrong, it's throwing off. How, it isn't correct. Yeah. And they can't identify where it is, and they think it's one spot, and it's actually another spot. And oh, wow. once they fix the ear, it's suddenly the eye looks great. So, um, you know, you just learn over time. This has much more detail. I think that's yeah. the last yeah. one. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's great. And I know you also um, try to highlight Beverly mm -hmm. as a town yes. with some uh, artwork where mm -hmm. where we are focusing on yep. places in Beverly, mm -hmm. Lynch Park, yes. um, the Falconer. Uh, can you talk a little bit about what the intention is there? Well, it actually started with, um, it's kind of kind of silly but not, Lynch Park, so growing up, I... I knew I was going to be an artist. Like, it wasn't even knew I was going to be an artist. It, I was. That was it. Yeah. Um, I was always the weird kid. Yeah. And Lynch Park was one of the first places where I discovered light, and I didn't understand what that was. I just knew that there was something there that I needed to be around, and I didn't have a name for it, and there, it, it, so it was always like a magic place. And the funny thing is the other place was the... Um, public library, there's a statue that I go and visit regularly of yeah. a little girl. Oh, wow. And this, the, the, just looking at it, the sound of the creaking um, floors, the textures, there was magic there. And I never until later on in life understood it was the light. The light everywhere and then the combination of elements. But light really, like... Like the play of light it's on, just a, on the, an object? The, yeah, yeah. Right where Lynch Park is, so there's water on the other side. The only place that ever um, really overwhelmed me with light even more than that was uh, um, when we went out to Baker's Island. And because it's surrounded by water, and then there's water in the middle of it, so you've got the sun hitting the water, lighting things up even more. Hmm. And it just hits, um, the way it hits the trees, it makes different shadows. And so it was not only like the, the light, hitting things but the shadows that it cast there was just something about it and then uh like i said later on as i started understanding and i was drawn to certain art 
and it, you know, other people felt the same. And then I realized this, oh, this is cool. Like this guy can make me feel, this guy that's been dead 20 years can make me feel something. And yeah. So that's when it was like, okay, sealed the deal for me. Yeah. So, you were in love with it. Yep. That yeah. was it. So let's look at another graphite mm -hmm. art, uh, piece that you have. Okay. So this is, uh, a, uh, portrait of David Bowie mm -hmm. that you worked on. So do you approach a human portrait differently than, say, if you did an animal? Or is it kind of just all the shapes and the same? Yeah, it's the same. Um, it's, it's all about shapes, relationships. Um, it's more to me more science-based than, you know, I'd love to say that I just sit around and feel artsy and do it, but it's more science-based. You know, you have to go, where is the corner of the eye in relationship to the nose? And where does this go? And then the importance, um, same thing in peanut, of the negative space. And that means the space that you're not actually using. Does this negative part here look like the one in the reference photo? Um, you know, does the... Does the cheekbone start halfway down, or does it start just above half? So there's, it's measuring, measuring, going back and forth, yeah. and it's the exact same uh, approach. The only difference is um, if I'm doing an animal or a person, this is where, like, the, the kind of artsy stuff comes in. It feels different. So there's a difference. So you always get this little, like, thing going in your head of what it is. You know, Peanut, and he's, he's cute, and he's this and that. And if I'm doing something like this one, I might be, you know, thinking about David Bowie or I might be looking at his eyes and, th you know, so it's just that the that's different, but the approach is the exact same. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So um, I was wondering if you could describe for me, you know, you have a great studio. You took me to your studio and I was wondering how having that studio influences your actual process of creation. So in my studio, you've been there, I have not only my studio stuff, but I have my parakeet and my guinea pigs. <laughs> and um, it's just like, I, it, it's just home. Yeah. Like that's home. That's where I want to be. Um, that's when I'm other places I want to be. That's where I'm happiest. Yep. Um, I have my, my, you know, we have peanuts peanut comes in and out, but I have my animals there to keep me company. Um, because a lot of, a lot of the time when I'm working, it's very, very intense. Yeah. So, um, and I don't mean intense in this horrible way, but it's just, you're concentrating and you're, and when I do stop, there's the parakeet and there's the guinea pigs. And you go from this hugely intense, really thoughtful place to, so it, it's just a good balance and it's, um, just where I want to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and so it influences. Um, can you describe, so like I said, you use a lot of uh, imagery of local mm -hmm. places and the North Shore. Can you describe how the North Shore influences your art? Yeah, so I had, um, my business is basically three-pronged. I do um, lessons, as I, I mentioned. I do the graphites. I do commissions. Um, and that's my, I would just spend the rest of my life doing graphite to people, but you can't, um, or people or pets. Um, but I also do a lot of craft type um, things. And these, like, are what we're seeing are on tote bags. And, you know, I think it's kind of funny that people say, how do you do that? Tote bag's canvas. Yeah, yeah. You know, just put some gesso on it and paint. Uh, but I do a lot of craft fairs, or I do a lot of local, uh, I have a, not a gift shop, but I have stock in my house that if people want something, they can come and look. Um, so when I'm at, and this is, yeah, this is, uh, I, I have to deliver these in fact next week. These are going to the um, hard merchandise store up in Gloucester. Okay. Um, so I do these for them. And I do a lot of the uh, clamshells. These are from these are from local beaches, so that also inspires me to do local scenes because I'm getting local um, clamshells. That's kind of where my crafting started was doing the clam clamshells, and it's um, branched off. And I find that people like the local scenes, and they like them done in not a commercial way. Yeah. So you can get a whole lot of pictures of. Um, 
anywhere in Beverly, but it's commercial. You know, and these are just regular old paintings yeah. or, you know, motif. Um, you can get motif tote bags, but you're not going to get a hand-painted one. Right. Too many of them, anyway. Yeah. Um, so I'd like to uh, offer things that people don't, wouldn't normally have, wouldn't, wouldn't normally see. See. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Now, Peanut, that you, we just featured, he also has a special mission yes. that he's on. Can yes. you talk a little bit about Peanut's mission? Peanut is a certified therapy dog. And Peanut and I make make uh, visits. We right now are doing uh, once a month New England Homes for the Deaf. We go twice um, uh, twice a month to the Current in Beverly. Okay. And then we also so we certified through a program called Dog Bones, and they send out uh, periodically. They'll send out an email um, for anyone that's looking for a therapy dog, and mm -hmm. if you if it's convenient, you answer and you go to the place. He he does Montserrat a lot too. Montserrat, okay. yeah, and he is the actually the official therapy dog of Danvers High School, so you could follow him on Instagram at Peanut the DHS Dog. <laughs> I love that. That's amazing. Um, how did you get him into it? Like, did you? How did you know that he would take to it? And he, so he was a COVID dog. Okay. And um, I was able to take him. He, we weren't able to go to puppy training because everything was closed. But then he was able to go to the next, he was, I don't know, six months or whatever. And, and he did so well in the training, he ended up going by himself, even though it was group classes because nobody else showed up. Okay. And the first trainer we worked with said, you got to get this dog into therapy because he's such a good boy. I said, okay, thought about it. And oh, then wow. he, the next trainer said the same thing. And then he went on to become what's called a canine good citizen. Um, what is that? It's a test that dogs have to, it's a, uh, uh, the American Kennel Club, I believe, puts it out. And it's a test that you have to pass certain things like um, obey certain commands and you have to be able to, like, he, he'll go so far from you and you can make him stop and you can make him come. Yeah. Um, you can make him not pick up something on the floor, loud noises. There's a whole bunch of different things that go into it. So he passed that. And then we did the um, therapy dog training after that. And he just, he's a people person. He loves, loves people. So I noticed that when I, oh when I was gosh. at your house, it was so it, cool. It, it's like, it's wonderful, but sometimes it's embarrassing because people, <laughs> like, there's people that don't like dogs and he'll be like, excuse me, dog. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> um, with your art, do you feel like there's sort of a motto that you go by or a, or a creed? Yeah, I can always do better. You can always do better. Always do better. Every single thing I do, it's like, and that's, I think, why I don't get attached to things, because the next one I know I can do better. Okay. So there's only a few that I'm really attached to just for sentimental, but other than that, I can always do better. And I had one teacher um, a few years, just before COVID, I did a um, life drawing class at Montserrat. I hadn't done one in years. And one of the um, students was said to me, you're awful hard on yourself. And I said, I know I am, yeah. but it's because I always, I can do better. I know I can do better. So yeah. that's, it. once I feel like I, I'm doing the best I can, I'm going to have to stop. So. Okay. Yep. I'll stop. Well, I hope that you never stop. <laughs> me too. Um, do you have advice for any young artists, artists that are starting out? Yeah. Um, work hard. It, you know, it's funny, one of my students, we were just talking about it today, she, I just found out she's only in, going into seventh grade, and I thought she was older because she's so focused. Oh, wow. She is like, like a pit bull with a bone. She's not giving up. And um, that would be, if my advice is, if that's how you feel, then don't give up. Just keep going. Yeah. Don't let anyone tell you, because everybody's going to say, well, that's not a good way to make a living. Um, there's going to be a million people telling you no and reasons why you can't. And then now take that and show them that you can. Show them so that you just, can. So just yeah. keep going, um, because you'll never be unhappy doing it. You might not be rich, but you'll never be unhappy. And it will be your life. It will be your life. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep, you might be rich, but chances are you're not going to be rich, but boy, you're going to be happier because I know a lot of rich people that have careers that, eh, 
they can't wait to not do it anymore and you know it's like five o'clock yep. i'm out of here yep. <laughs> yep. and i'm always like okay i'm jonesing to go home now and go to work <laughs> go to your studio yep yeah mm -hmm. um where can we find you online so my website is judygeorge.art so that's pretty easy yep and i am on instagram and it's at judy george custom custom yep Okay, and you said Peanut has an online presence. Yeah, Peanut has his own face. I do have a Facebook page, and I don't know what the link is, but you can find that through Judy George Art. Um, but Peanut has a uh, Facebook page, Your Daily Peanut, and then uh -huh. he also has his um, DHS account, Peanut the DHS Dog. Love that. Yep. Love that. Well, every show, I cap it with a poem, and um, I, I give you the card. Um, with the date and mm -hmm. my, my sign. I'm excited signed. to hear mine. So this is your poem. Peanut is the title. Just a helper, taking it easy for a day, to wow us, to hold the moment, is your dog and more. Giving a little title to the right, Peanut is full of love. Oh, that's sweet. That's I for you. I love that. Thank you. That's going to go right on his picture that's hanging in. Oh, <laughs> it's going to go right on his picture. Good. Well, Judy George, thank you so much for joining us thank on you. Art About. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Thank you. This was Jen Campbell with Art About. And um, we are all about the North Shore and its art. <laughs> ¶¶